Hello, just a quick update. I've not forgotten about the channel. I do still intend on uploading videos. I, it's just a real busy time at the moment. Just to give you an update of what's been happening in the background, I've been uh, sourcing some new camera equipment, which is what I'm using here. I've also been trialing some audio to see what works best. Some lighting, I've got some new lights set up. I'm still not quite happy with it, but trialing it. Uh, the 3D printer broke twice. So I've had to repair that both times. Both of them was in the middle of a print. So I've had to restart that print. Thankfully it did finish. I was able to get a part of the first Canon ammo drum printed. Now this is much, much lighter than the original one. I still need to take all the support material off. So that'll be coming in a video uh, soon. We got the new front brace, which is much lighter than the one I've got there. Hopefully it'll be strong enough once the bearings and the um, axle are put in for the barrels. So what we got on our projects coming up, electronics for the burst cannon. I've started to motorize it. I'll stick a, a little video here for you. It works really well. The gearbox that I'm currently using just to see what ratio of gears I need to my motor uh, is really, really loud. Once I've decided on that, I can solidify things a bit more. I can get the exact motor I need with the exact gearbox I need. Uh, to get that step down. I'm not looking for that many rotations. Those parts I showed you, we need to fit those onto the burst cannon and work on the main body section, start bulking that out. The actual shroud that we had around the barrel, I was not happy with at all, and I couldn't quite think of a way to uh, secure it properly, and I think I've come up with a really, really nice way of doing that, so that's something that we need to look at. One thing is certain, I want to use a flight stick to hold and operate the burst cannon. A flight stick has enough buttons for me to be able to operate all the electronics from one hand. It also means that uh, if I can ar arrange a strap that goes over the top of my forearm, it'll be my forearm that's actually taking the weight of the burst cannon, not my wrist. Certainly something I need to look into, but something I want to do. Now with regards to the actual stealth suit project, there's a variety of things that we need to be getting on with. There's more sanding to be done to finish off and smooth out those seams. The skin itself is now on and sorted. Some of the edges need neatening up. The biggest question currently that's hanging over me is how the faceplate actually joins to the helmet. There's a seam currently. Now, we see this image here. There is quite a large gap in between the front faceplate and the rest of the helmet. When I'm walking around in this, currently it doesn't fit properly, it doesn't quite connect. So I have to hold it shut with one hand and it's not the best option. I've got a few ideas with regards to that. One of them in particular was uh, using a seat belt buckle from a car on my actual belt that the faceplate can clip into. Doing it that way, I should be able to then operate it with one hand, release it, and it'll secure it closed. Now, that doesn't solve the problem of the gap between the faceplate and the rest of the helmet. I need to be able to get the two pieces to line up and touch without leaving a seam. I don't think that's possible in this current configuration. I may need to reattach these two sections together and carve out a nicer join one that I can fully support maybe a bit more metal work involved but I think in the long run it'll give us a much better solution once I'm happy with that uh, I the next step is actually to work on the pelvis now currently it's in a sorry state it's actually ripped in a couple of places very simple to repair it's actually torn on the seams uh, it looks like the glue's just given in so i need to redo them this bottom piece uh, is actually going to get reinforced with some uh, polyester webbing of some sort um, just to give it a bit more stability the actual waist of the pelvis is going to have a belt in it with carabiners 
to allow it to attach to the buckles I'm going to place around the uh, around the metalwork on the body of the stuff suit. That will allow me to quickly take it off and easily attach it. I won't keep fiddling with it. One of the biggest problems I had with this in the past is that it would just slip down because nothing was holding it up, or at least you know, nothing strong enough to hold it up, especially when it started to tear. One of the other sections I want to do, currently I just have these uh, armor plates carved in. I actually want to make, make these more pronounced. I'm going to take a template of these and raise them out a bit more and add a bit more detail into them. Same goes for the panels around the side. I'm actually going to create similar uh, design panels to go around the waist. So thank you all for watching. I just wanted to give you that brief update to let you know what's been happening. Uh, there will be more videos coming very soon. So hit that subscribe button, the notification bell icon if you haven't already. I really appreciate it and I will see you next time.